It's six o'clock. Call the meeting to order. Stand for the motion, please. So I want to welcome you all to this meeting. This meeting is called specifically to talk about a concern that's been raised in the community regarding bullying. Um, so the only uh, agenda item on here is public comment. Um, so under a normal school committee meeting, parents have the right, or any public, any member of the public has the right to come to the school committee meeting, address any meeting agenda item for three minutes. My thought, our thought, this committee's thought was that um, there are parents who would like to speak for probably a little bit more than three minutes on an issue that's involving their, their life and their children. So we want them to give you an opportunity to do that. However, we want to be respectful that there are a lot of people in this room who want to have their say. And so we want to make sure that we're not taking an exorbitant amount of time each person. We want to hear from all of you. We absolutely want to hear from all of you. Um, what we will not do is go back and forth. This is not a, we're going to solve this problem today. What we want to do is hear from you. That's the purpose of this meeting. So if we can all understand that, we'll move forward with hearing from the public. Is everybody, are we all good? Does everybody understand? Yes. We are not planning to solve this thing. We can't solve this thing. This is a different issue. We have to have this, have the administration take a look and listen and hear and understand your concerns and then we can move forward, okay? We're good? I'm going to ask if we can close the doors only because there's a lot of background noise and I want to make sure that we can hear each other. Can I add one thing, really? Sir? Just, uh, I'm sure you all know this, but just because this is a public meeting and broadcast and all that stuff, if you are describing a specific incident, don't use names, don't use things like that. You have to, there's certain privacy laws and all that stuff, so, you know, when appropriate, use generalities to uh, express your point. Yes, if at all possible, so they, okay. And then, and then one other thing, I'm sorry. When you do speak, can you please announce who you are, just so that we all know. I know most of you, I think, to some level, but I don't necessarily know all of you. You can use a real name in that situation. <laughs> right, right. Don't use a pseudonym, uh, 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 author's name. What do they call those? Pen name. Uh, pen name. Thank, thank you. Okay. Who would like to go first? Or did you have a question? I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I had a question in regards to um, using people's names. Am I allowed to refer to the staff at the school by name? Um, so I would ask that you do it this way, right? So if you have to refer to a particular staff member, mm -hmm. please do not make it a personal issue. Let's make sure that we're talking about the professional side of the business, right? Yeah. Okay, does that, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, right. I want, I, this can't be a personal attack on anybody. I understand this is very personal for all of you. I, I understand that. I, five children, got it. I understand, okay? So, so please, if we can just keep it on a professional level, that'd be great. Okay? Who would like to speak first? Feel free, please. Okay. And you are? Hello, uh, my name is Heather Hulkyard. I am the mother of a former fifth grade student at North Brookfield Elementary School who has experienced bullying for months by students and staff. I want to thank the school committee for coordinating this meeting to address some very serious concerns I have regarding the school's administration and processes concerning bullying. Over the past several months, I have been addressing bullying concerns with the administration at North Brookfield Elementary School via class dojo, phone, and in-person meetings. These bullying incidents include students calling my son names like crybaby and loser, making fun of his appearance and clothing, and worst of all, sorry, it's okay. um, <clears throat> and worst of all, making fun of him for his dad not being around. I'm sorry. It's okay. Not only has he been experiencing bullying from his classmates, his math and science teacher, Dan Pepperly, was also making inappropriate comments towards him and promoting violence in the classroom. During the week of February 12th, several incidents took place involving my son and other students. 
One of these incidents that took place on February 15th included my son being accused of threatening violence to another child. The other parent and I were notified via class dojo by his teacher, Jenna Duvall, hours after the incident took place. I replied immediately to the message and went to the school to speak to the principal, Sarah Priestley, but she was unavailable. Before I left the school parking lot, I called and left her a message asking for an urgent call back to discuss this very serious concern. She never called back. On February 16th, I took my son to school and waited in the office to speak to Sarah Priestley, but when she arrived, she informed me she was still unavailable to meet until later. During this meeting, I addressed several concerns I had regarding incidents from that week, but also revisited previous concerns I had regarding bullying in the school and the lack of follow-up and accountability from the staff. Sarah Priestley assured me that she had spoken with the students and confirmed they were participating in bullying my son and that she would follow up with holding them accountable. Sarah Priestley also stated she would set up monthly meetings with me to discuss what was going on and follow up on any concerns we were having. However, she never set up these meetings. During my meeting with Sarah Priestley on February 16th, I brought up once again a concern regarding Dan Pepperly, um, or I'll refer to him as Mr. P. Mr. P was my son's math and science teacher for fifth grade. In the beginning of the school year, at least once a week, my son would come home and state that Mr. P was mean to him. Whether it was yelling, throwing things, making rude comments, like he was glad my son wasn't at school the day before, and school is so much nicer and quieter when he's not there, and overall being inappropriate in front of my son's peers. There was an incident that took place several months ago where my son indicated Mr. P threw a chair during class. At this time, I had no idea of the context, but recently, another student told his mother about the incident and stated Mr. P was throwing the chair at or because of something my son did. It was unclear. As of recently, the relationship with Mr. P had improved and was addressed during a recent meeting I had with Mr. P, Mr. Ball, Mrs. Priestley, Mrs. Smith, and Mrs. Mack, the school counselor. So I kind of let go of the growing concerns I was having regarding this issue. However, after seeing how the situation was handled, it really makes me wonder what other things have taken place that we as parents are not being informed of. These incidents were not handled appropriately by Sarah Priestley. It is her job to follow up with a formal investigation regarding concerns of bullying. The negligence from the administration is extremely disheartening. There have been several occasions where my son came home and informed me that he was physically hurt by another student and had to see the nurse with no call from the school to inform me. I have always given the school the benefit of a doubt, believing that they had my, best, my son's best interests at heart. So I haven't been keeping track of every day and time they have failed my son and myself as educators, but I do know there have been more situations they have not handled in a professional manner. This brings me to, my, this brings me to the last day my son attended North Brookfield Elementary. On Monday, March 11th, my son came home defeated after another hard day at school. He was upset and crying because he had not reached his points for his check-in, check-out program. We discussed the events leading up to this, which he expressed another day of being bullied at school and dismissed by the teachers and staff. This included being made fun of for his haircut, hit so hard in the back of the head that he fell to the ground during recess and was told to get back in line by Mr. P, and then at lunch being told his dad did not return with the milk. None of these incidents were brought to my attention by the staff at North Brookfield, and even though my son reported every single one. I requested an urgent meeting with Sarah Priestley and requested the super superintendent, Mr. McCormick, attend. This meeting took place on Thursday, March 14th between myself, my mother, Michelle, Sarah Priestley, Tim McCormick, Jenna Duvall, Dan Pepperly, Nikki Smith, and Anastasia McCoochewitz. During this meeting, I again expressed my concerns surrounding the ongoing bullying at the school and requested an explanation as to why a formal investigation had not been performed the last meeting I had with Sarah Priestley on February 16th. At this time, Sarah Priestley claimed she was unaware of certain bullying claims I had brought up during our last meeting and made excuses for why she had not completed an investigation. I ended the meeting abruptly as she was not being truthful in what was previously discussed during the meeting between just her and I. It was not until I filed a formal complaint with the Department of Education that she began taking the appropriate action and starting an investigation. During her investigation regarding Dan Pepperly throwing a chair in the classroom, she only interviewed Dan Pepperly. She did not talk to any other students regarding the incident. I have confirmed with another parent whose child was present that day that a chair was thrown in the classroom. In the investigation, Dan Pepperly admits he has treated my son poorly. He even admitted in the meeting we had in January in front of multiple other administrators. She classified this as an isolated incident and that the relationship had improved. In what world is it okay for a teacher to talk down to a student, to put them down in front of their classmates and to make them feel less than? 
It's not okay at all, ever. Not even in an isolated incident. The problem is, it wasn't isolated. It happened over weeks and months, and it was, and was framed in the way of my son misbehaving in class. I truly believe that Dan Fackerly's behavior encouraged the students to feel comfortable in treating my son poorly with no accountability. Sarah Priestley has concluded the investigation regarding all the incidents I have indicated in my complaint to the Department of Education and found that it did not meet the criteria for bullying. She included an action plan at the end of her investigation indicating all the actions they would take to keep my son safe moving forward, but it's a little too late. The only action that would have mattered was doing the investigation when things were reported, before additional incidents took place and more damage was done. I do not feel as though North Brookfield Elementary School um, or Jenna Duvall or Dan Pepperly have done their jobs as educators to protect my child or take the necessary steps to address the concerns I have. My son meets with a counselor outside of school to address for bullying concerns. I'm concerned for my child's mental health and safety. I do not take these things lightly and do not feel comfortable with my child returning to a school where the administration does not address serious matters appropriately. At this point, I have unenrolled my son from North Brookfield Elementary School and will homeschool for the remainder of the school year. He has been accepted to school choice out of the North Brookfield School District so he can have an opportunity with a new school and fresh start next year. He has attended North Brookfield Elementary since he was three years old. It's very unfortunate he has to leave the friends he does have and take a bus to another school district when we live within a three minute walk from the school. This brings me to my next point. After seeing how Sarah Priestley and the rest of the administration reacted to my concerns, I took to social media to see if others had experienced similar circumstances regarding bullying in the school system. I asked several of them to join today and share their stories. After hearing these stories, it made me realize that this is a systemic issue. Not only did I hear from parents of students currently and formerly enrolled in North Brookfield Public Schools, I also heard from former students who shared how hard things were for them in high school, how they were bullied and no one did anything about it in the North Brookfield school system. As a parent, I am my son's voice when no one will listen. Since I have filed a formal complaint with the Department of Education regarding this matter, I hope they can find the cracks in the system and address these ongoing issues as well as the school committee and members of the community. I not only want to fight back against bullying, I want to make sure every student has a voice, that every student feels safe reporting these issues, every parent feels confident in sending their child to school every day, and that the teachers and administration are taking the necessary actions to keep the students safe. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Um, that was just a little bit longer than I was for, for me. No, I understand. So I, I, you know, I just, if we want to hear from everybody, we've got to try to be, a, and I appreciate that. I understand. I know where that came from. So um, does any of the members of the committee have any questions that they needed to ask? Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Feel free. Please. Uh, I'm Amber DeBettenport. Uh, I have three kids who attend North Brookfield Elementary. Fortunately, I do not have a lot of time. I work night shift. My shift starts in a couple of hours and I didn't sleep today, so forgive me. Um, I'm a little bit on the opposite end of this. I apologize. I find that over the years, the school's response to bullying has been quite appropriate. And in fact, quite openly, I will admit, my husband and I have been investigated based on false accusations from one of my own children when they were mad at my husband for being punished. They accused my husband of doing something he didn't do and we were investigated by the Department of Social Services and they found those accusations to not be true. Um, and then another false accusation from you know, uh, another person, we won't get into that and the school followed up appropriately, you know, we need to follow up on all accusations of inappropriate behavior, which I'm all for because I'd rather be investigated and found innocent than any child, you know, who needs help not be investigated. Sorry, emotional. Um, also, I take bullying very seriously as a child who grew up bullied and um, tried to commit suicide and ended up in a mental hospital as a teenager. Sorry. Um, so, Anytime my kids come home crying from being bullied because they have been bullied at school, because you know, you can't stop bullying 100%, you know, it's always going to happen, kids are going to be kids. But each time we've had an incident, whether my kids have been the aggressors, because they're kids, my kids have been aggressors and they have been receivers, the, the school has, in my opinion, taken appropriate actions, especially 
my son can get pretty aggressive. Uh, I don't know if it's because he's a boy or what, because he's my only boy, but uh, we get, and uh, Obsidia has been um, bullied quite often for being very emotional, like her mother, so she gets called crybaby a lot, unfortunately. So, but I found that those schools had a very good support system for her. Ms. Mack has always been there for her. Her doors has always been open. And like I get phone calls about her progress and stuff. So like I feel like they've been really supportive of my children when they've had issues. So I'm kind of like supportive of the school system on, on the bullying that's been going on. So I wanted to come out and support that. Like I think the school's been doing a good job. And I have no animosity, especially since I've been accused of, you know, you know, I've been reported to DCF because, you know, the school's been doing their job. And, like, I've been found innocent of, you know, that. So I think they're doing a great job. They're following up on every incident, whether it's justified or not justified, and making sure everybody's safe. And I think that's wonderful. And, you know, every kid should be safe. And I'm sorry other people aren't, you know, other people don't feel that way, but um, I just wanted to come out and say that I'm supportive of the school and I think they've been doing a great job, especially with my children. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would speak? Oh, sorry. Were there any questions? Sorry, you should have asked that. Thank you again. Thank you. Feel free. Um, so I will no, just. No, name first. Oh, I'm sorry. No. No, you. Just she knew. She knew. I just wanted to say, okay, sorry. Um, um, so I'm Tashina. Yep. Full name. Yeah. I'm Tashina Holmes from, you know, I live on Union Street. I've Thank lived you. in North Brookfield my whole entire life, basically, since I was four or five years old. And I did deal with bullying growing up. I um, mean, that was like one of my biggest fears coming to North Brookfield. It really was like one of my ultimate, like, I was so terrified. And up and all through my when my first my first son Andrew went into the school, I could not have been more happier with how it ended up. Really could not. Um, you know, we did have a few issues of him being bullied and picked on, or not, I wouldn't say bullying. And I do want to say, I am a peer support specialist. I work in a lot of school districts, and I specifically support parents who are struggling with bullying. And bullying, by definition, does not mean you're getting picked on. It does not mean kids are being mean to you. Even if the same kid's being mean to you over and over again, unfortunately, that's not bullying. Bullying is when there's a significant difference between, you know, the social status or whatever of the other kid. And that's really important because, and that's happened to me as a person, and that will make you want to unalive yourself. And that is how I have felt. Um, it'll make you so, like, and, that's, and that is such an extreme difference than just being picked on. My daughter has, she is, uh, she's done growing, and she's 12. And she is at the lovely height of four feet, four inches tall. And let me tell you, that makes her a huge target. And she has been targeted multiple times. And there was a few times that recently I was frustrated with it not being reported correctly um, and not being dealt with correctly. But we were able to, you know, move move past it. Um, and there hasn't been any any issues recently. Um, but I. I, I tried to send her to another school because I was being harassed. I was being you, you actually, just actually bullied. Sorry, I'm a public speaker. You're fine. But yeah, um, way, I'm, I, I uh, was being harassed by people in town, and then they started to harass my kid in town, not in school, but in town. I took my kids outside of the district, and the bullying for both my children was horrendous. And some of the bullying I've seen, I am planning on moving. Um, and I might not end up in North Brookfield, and that scares me. Um, but I do know, and I do know there's another side to it. The kids who are bullying these kids usually need a lot of help. They're usually, they're not, kids don't just, they're not just born bullies. They're not just born being mean. Unfortunately, the school really has to balance both sides of taking care of both kids. Um, and I do want to say publicly that I would plead with the school to do a, because we do have a bullying problem. We really, I'm not bullying, but we do have a problem of being mean in, in, our, in our environment and judging each other throughout the whole town. So I would plead with the school to really, the school committee to really do an anti-bullying campaign, a really hard one throughout the whole community come October. Um, there is a great program and then, you know, 
teachers and, and parents. Um, there's a program called Active Parenting. If you're looking at ways to talk about discipline versus um, versus punishment, because I think that sometimes teachers do struggle with that. They don't want to punish kids who are just acting out, but we do want to hold them accountable. Because I do know how sometimes it feels like that kid wasn't held accountable when you feel like they should have been. Um, and those are some, there are some great programs and great work resources that Mr. McCormick and I meet monthly with a group of people and talk about that. Thank you. Any questions? Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Please. Hi. I am Lauren Burder. I have three. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. You're Lauren Burder. Thank you. I have three children currently enrolled. Um, my daughter was named as an aggressor. And that has been very hurtful to me because I'm not, um, over the years, she has been picked on by the same child. We have different parenting techniques, which is obviously that's going to happen. But my parenting technique was, you know, we need to learn from this and we need to, two wrongs don't make a right. You know, unfortunately, kids can be mean and they can say things. Now, I guess over all the years, I probably should have been documenting all of this because now she, by that same person, is being named as an aggressor. So it, it hurts. Um, and I just want to throw that out there that now it's, you know, in a record for basically doing nothing. So just want to make that known. Thank you. Any questions? Does anybody else, please? Um, my name is Stella Morin, um, who also has a child in fifth grade who has been named as an aggressor. Um, and when she found that out, it broke her because she has been um, taunted since kindergarten. It has been mentioned to every teacher that she has that this is the same child that has bothered her. Um, and now she is the one that's being named as an aggressor um, for sticking up for herself. She's a good girl. She has a good parenting. I'm not a bad parent. I have many people who know my daughter. Um, and this was all very shocking, um, this entire situation. I thought, you know, we were going to sit down all together, discuss this, um, and not find out by a letter saying that my daughter was accused of being a bully. Um, so it's just very upsetting. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Is there anybody else who would speak? I, I, I did want to add something. I'm sorry, I forgot the second half of my statement. Um, if that's okay. Well, we. So you missed the beginning of the meeting, and yeah. so you said at normal meeting we would have three minutes. Okay. And no, so we want to allow people to speak. So yeah. before I come back to you, I just want to make sure there's nobody else in the room that wants to speak. I'll let you speak. I just want okay. to come back to you. Is there anybody else? All right, so she mutes you. Um, I, and I think so. I, I do want to add that once we got to high school, uh, we ran into some serious issues, which is why we pushed really hard for my son to, to move out of the district. I know that there's a lot of changeover with the, the principal. My son was bullied so badly that he was uh, he had bruises um, from from um, from gym when he would go every single day, um, and so even to the point where his cell phone was stolen and put on top of a locker. And the principal at the time, which I know he's not now. Um, would uh, said it wasn't. Oh, it doesn't. It's it's fine. Like we've handled it. There was no. And I, from what I've seen, because my daughter has had some issues, there had the, the documentation of these issues is. I do plead for that to change because there is not being properly documented, uh, especially in high school. Um, I mean, or it wasn't last year at least. Okay. One last chance. I want to make sure everybody's had a chance to say what they have to say. Okay, so I would like to say, I don't know if any of the members of the committee have anything they would like to say? Please follow. <clears throat> well, this brought to my attention, we, we, have, we do have a document pertaining to bullying policy in the district. But looking at it, as it was instituted in 2017 under previous administrations, 
and uh, I think it's worth revisiting. You know, providing there are some. And this is a public document. I think available through the school website, and there are dead links in it. So at the very least, there should be, there needs to be some housekeeping in that regard. But you know, I think we need to revisit the document itself to um, make sure that things are properly covered and that you know it's up to date with state policies. Um, you know, what, whatever policies there are that apply to this. Um, I think we need to make sure that everything is in order. Um, and as far as the bullying goes, it's a personal issue for me because, believe it or not, I might be the biggest one in the room, but I was a victim of bullying quite a bit in school. So this is this is close to home for me. And um, I was picked on because of my size, not because I was diminutive, but because kids knew they could pick on me because I wasn't going to fight back because I could destroy him, but you know, tell the story. Um, anyway, uh, I just like to say it's, it is personal when I hear these stories that I, I uh, hear and understand. And um, I personally hope that there is serious um, action taken and that uh, we can make some positive steps forward for these kids and make sure that everything's handled properly. Um, you know, at least moving forward, we will have progress made. That's what I'm hoping for. So then, <clears throat> what I'd like to say is, first of all, we know how sensitive of a subject this is for you, and we appreciate you taking the time to come and share with us, right? Um, whatever side of the aisle you happen to be on with regard to the bullying that happens here in the public field and the way that it's been handled, um, we wanted to hear you, and so that's why we put this meeting together, right? So um, this meeting was to hear what you had to say. We will um, now leave it in, in, well, not leave it, but at this moment, turn it over to, to the superintendent for his, him to do what he does with all these things. And we will come back with, with what we can do, or, or, or I don't know what we can say, obviously. Yeah, because policy because the, take a well, in. certainly, I think the policy yeah. subcommittee, if, if, uh, if nothing else, the policy subcommittee should absolutely look at this policy and make sure that it's up to date. And if you want to get that as a motion at this moment, you certainly can, and I would be happy to accept that and move it forward. When well, the, the policy subcommittee take on reviewing the uh, current school policy, I'd like to add that you should probably work with the administration to update it and implement the changes to it and then bring it back to the, the committee as a whole to approve it. Is there a second? Second. So I will say that it looks like that uh, committee, that uh, policy was done jointly with a bunch of the administrators. So I agree with you, Tim. I think that's a good call. Is there any question on that motion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, <coughs> Because these are individual uh, uh, situations, it's not possible, right? It's not possible and it's not appropriate, really, for the committee to actually address each and every individual one of those. So um, it is my distinct hope that we will get you um, at least some semblance of uh, what can and cannot be done um, through the process that we can actually affect. You, uh, the committee really does not have um, a lot to do with day to day in the, in the way that the schools run. We have the right to set policy, we have the right to hire and, and, and manage the superintendent, we have the, the responsibility over finance, we have the responsibility <coughs> over curriculum. That's where our responsibilities really end. Um, and then we are your liaison. And so this was an opportunity for us to hear from you directly not through Facebook, not through some other social media, but directly from you about what's going on. And I hope you understand how seriously we do take this, because um, we wanted to make sure that you had the time that you wanted to come in and speak. So uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to move in. So moved. And a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you.